guys, so today we're going to be doing another reading update, horror books that I've read lately, horror and thrillers, of course, because the line is very blurry when it comes to books, I feel. <laughs> Maybe even more so than horror thriller movies. But today's video is very exciting for me because one, I love talking about what I'm reading and I love talking about books and I wish I read a little bit more so I could do more reading and book content on this channel because it's something I'm really passionate about. But also two of the books that I'm going to be talking about in today's video are now in my top five favorite horror books of all time. And the fact I read them so close together is just incredible. And I will be doing a video one day on my favorite horror books. Um, but for right now, I feel like I just wanna wait it out a little bit because there's so many on my TBR that I know I'm going to love. So I kinda wanna get through a big chunk of my TBR uh, before I you know, commit to that video. I could do parts, you know, part one, part two, um, just do like 10 recommendations, like 10 horror books that I really enjoyed. But yeah, we'll do that in the future. But today you're getting two of those books, so. Look forward to that. And there's only five in this video. So two out of the five were spectacular. So the first book we're going to talk about, I talked about briefly in my monthly recap, uh, in my letterbox recap this last video, um, because I watched the movie which was god awful, hated it, especially compared to the book. Not good, did not do it justice. So this is of course Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. She is the author of Sharp Objects and Gone Girl and she is lucky enough to have adaptations for all of her novels. What an accomplishment. <laughs> this is actually the first book that I've ever read from her. I have seen Gone Girl the movie and I really enjoy it. So I am looking forward to that. I do own Sharp Objects and Gone Girl as well and look forward to reading them. Um, but this is the first one that I've ever read from Gillian Flynn. She kind of has what I would call an abrasive writing style. I don't know if that's appropriate or not. Um, I think I've read enough books to like differentiate her writing as being very blunt and to the point and I don't know if it's her writing style in general because I haven't read her other books or if it was just intentional for this specific main character in this book. So Dark Places follows Libby Day who is the sole survivor of a satanic sacrifice of her family during the satanic panic uh, phenomenon that happened in the 1980s and this kind of follows her in her adulthood while she's still trying to navigate the trauma and also discovering whether or not her brother who was actually convicted for the murders is actually guilty. Now, what I like about this is the commentary about the true crime community, because I feel like that is a very toxic, not all of it. It can be a very toxic community where they cannot separate the fact that this is, that true crime is not just for entertainment. This is stuff that actually happened to people. And I feel like this has really good commentary on that because a lot of people don't make that separation of the fact that it is reality and it's very disturbing and horrific, these things that have happened to these people. You know, the kind of romanticizing the true crime community and romanticizing serial killers, which you know how I feel about that because my videos on my other channel kind of went viral. So I feel very passionately about not romanticizing killers. So I really enjoyed the commentary in this. This does read more like a crime drama. So it is horrific at times. It is disturbing. I have marked the animal cruelty that is in it. Um, if you're curious about where that is, you could just let me know. Um, but it's not that bad, I'd say. It's, it's kind of bad, I don't know. It really depends on what your threshold is when it comes to animal cruelty in novels. But another favorite thing that I liked about this book is the shifting perspectives. I think that's one of the, my favorite things that books can do is when every chapter is a different character and we're switching perspectives constantly, it really makes for an easy and entertaining read because you never wanna stop reading it because there's always going to be something exciting or different or unique about the next chapter. It breaks up the monotony and of course it gives the reader a better picture which I really enjoy because that's a really easy way to kind of paint the entire picture fully for the reader is by switching perspectives so I enjoyed that in this. So I actually edited my initial rating of this book from four stars to three stars and I think that's just because it's not a hundred percent for me. I liked the story, I liked the storytelling I'm just not sure that the writing style is fully up my alley. Like I, 
enjoy it. It's entertaining, but it's just not really my thing. I just don't know really how else to word it. Uh, if you've read her novels, maybe you know kind of her writing style. And again, I don't know if it's just because of the main character. I found Libby Day to be very unlikable, to be honest. I understand the reason why she kind of is portrayed in this negative light because she survived trauma. So she's very doubtful and untrusting of people, but she is just playing rude sometimes. And I'm, she's just hard to root for. Like obviously as a child, you're rooting for her. Uh, but as an adult, she just, I don't know. And there's really nothing at stake when she's an adult, really. I don't know. <laughs> I just didn't connect to the main character at all. Like Libby Day to me was just, just like her mom, just like her brother. She was just there. She was just a character and nothing really connected me to her because she was just unlikable. Now the story is written really well uh, to where you will not guess who the real killer is. Um, every time that I was like thinking I knew for sure what was happening, it completely blindsided me and I was not correct. So obviously there's only so many people it could be, but it's very surprising the twists in this and that in itself was entertaining as well. So overall an entertaining read. I don't think I'll revisit it. Um, I will read her other works just to, you know, feel her out for myself again to see if her writing styles for me. I like the movie Gone Girl, but this movie was horrible. So we'll see about sharp objects. Next up, we're going to talk about Pen Pal by Dathan Auerbach. I hope that's how you pronounce his name. This is a very unique experience. This is a unique read and I highly, highly recommend this one. So this is actually a self-published book. Uh, originally a creepypasta series on Reddit that was posted by Dathan himself on his Reddit page. And it was also read on the debut season of No Sleep Podcast, which is my favorite podcast of all time. Favorite horror podcast, any, any kind of podcast. I love No Sleep. I actually saw them live. They are incredible, but this book was, at, these stories were actually read on the first season of that, which I had no idea because I got in into no sleep at like season three so i hadn't really visited the previous seasons so i'm excited to go listen to them now that i've read the book because i love these stories so i want to see how the you know voice actor and everything does with it so i'm just personally really connected to the history of this book and the like self-published aspect which is probably the route that i'm going to go down uh, when i do publish my novel a collection of short stories. I will probably do self-publishing. Um, so I really like that he just kind of started as someone telling stories on the internet and then evolved into a published novel that's actually pretty successful. So it is very inspiring for me and to read the really good quality writing that he has. It's very inspiring. So Pen Pal is a collection of non-linear short stories all following this anonymous narrator as he's piecing together these collect this collection of memories that he has from his childhood when he was the target of a stalker. Now this book is eerie. It will literally make your skin crawl. You will get goosebumps. It is so chilling. Like it's so subtly chilling too. And I really like that it's most of the stories are from the perspective of a child who doesn't really understand why the behavior of this stalker is scary or chilling, but as an adult, obviously we're reading this and we're like, oh my God. It just makes you very, very uncomfortable. And the horror is more so from that kind of perspective. There is one story in this when he's a teenager that is absolutely horrifying and there's body horror. It is so scary. And that's probably my favorite story in this is the one where he's a teenager. It's just so shocking. Like this book is shocking and it's not even so much in a very extreme way. I don't think this is an extreme horror or anything like that. It's very subtle, but the fact like when you get the big picture of everything going on, it is just eerie, very chilling. I also really love the inspiration for these stories as well from Dathan and his childhood and how he has a very vivid memory that his mother said never happened and how he says that we can never really remember our childhood. So we're kind of relying on other people telling us what happened in our childhoods, which can be kind of scary if you think about it. You know, sometimes we just have bits and pieces of memory from our childhood. And I like that he took that and made it into something horrifying. So highly, highly recommend this one. What did I give this one? Four out of five definitely very good and it's pretty short so if you need to you know reach a goal or something this one's really good okay so the next book we're going to talk about is the best book that i have read lately and is in my top five of all time and is going to be the best book in this whole video and the one that i recommend more than anything else because this 
book is wild. <laughs> the Last House on Needless Street by Catriona Ward. Now this is just one of my favorite pieces of writing now. It is, I can't, this is what I'm gonna talk about the least too in this video because <laughs> it is just, I can't talk about it without giving anything away and you have to go into this knowing hardly anything. Uh, the book is about a killer, uh, a missing child, a sister looking for her missing sister, a man who lives at the last house on Needless Street. There is just so many layers <laughs> in this book that you cannot summarize it. What is the uh, inside flap even say for the story? Boarded up house on a dead end street, teenage girl who isn't allowed outside, a man who drinks alone in front of his TV, a house cat who loves napping and reading the Bible. <laughs> The new neighbor moves in next door. What is buried among the birch trees may come back to haunt them all. As soon as you start reading this and you get to a very specific chapter, um, you're going to ask yourself what the fuck is going on. Because I was so confused <laughs> when I started reading certain chapters. I was like, I really thought it was going to be a little bit more of a pretentious read and I thought it was going to have just like weird perspectives and be weird for weird's sake and I did not end up feeling that way at all. I think it really executes the entire story perfectly. Again, this does do the shifting perspectives every chapter. Uh, this is probably the wildest example of it doing that. Uh, uh, this one especially, I always wanted to continue reading it because I was just so confused for so long. And then when I started piecing things together, I just could not stop reading. I was actually warned to take breaks with this book because it's so much and you have to like take in so much. Um, but I just could not take breaks. I could not. I just had to like power through because this, I just had to know I, what I was reading. <laughs> I really went into this thinking it was just like a haunted house story. Uh, just like a generic like thriller, you know, like I really did not <laughs> anticipate anything that happened in this book. I had no idea what I was getting into and I really think that's the best way to go into this book. I know a lot of people want me to talk spe specifics about this book and specifically about a certain element in this that is typically not my favorite. But anyway, the element that I'm talking about is probably my favorite use of it of all time and the best possible way to use it in any kind of like horror setting because you know it can go very wrong very quickly and i know i'm being very vague with that i just if you've read it you know what element i'm talking about and i know you want to know my thoughts on it so i'm trying to be as vague as possible for the people who have not read this because you need to and i will say i was mad for some of the book i was very upset with the use of this and i was like why are we doing this why you had you were so good you set it up beautifully to be a certain way and you ruined it all but then it saves itself so if you think <laughs> you're gonna get mad this does not make any sense and none of my thoughts on this book make sense right now it completely switches around on you multiple times where you think you know what's happening and you just don't i will say probably not everyone's going to like this i don't want to recommend it to like everyone um but i do recommend it to most people because if you're into horror books uh this is a unique one and I think the experience in reading it is really exciting and really entertaining so that's why I recommend it and obviously it's five out of five for me definitely would reread this I almost immediately wanted to reread it as soon as I finished it <laughs> next up we have another new favorite of mine and this one is just five out of five as well top five books for sure but not going to be that for everyone and I'm not sure everyone would really get what I got out of this book Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. This is the most fun book that I've read lately. Like this reading experience was phenomenal. Like, and the reading ambiance that I chose for this, you gotta check it out. Um, I will link some reading ambiances down below because that is my special skill. I will find the best reading ambiance for any book I'm reading. Just give me 10 minutes on YouTube and I will find something. But this is a favorite of mine for personal reasons. This is just so my type of book that it just could not be more perfect to me. And because of that, because it's for personal reasons and my personal taste in horror books, this is not going to be for everyone. So this is a science fiction horror novel that follows Claire Kovalik, who is the lead of a space crew who receives a distress signal from the Aurora, which was a luxury spaceship cruise liner. So it's basically like a cruise ship for space travel and it disappeared 20 years ago during its maiden voyage and now they're getting this distress signal and they decide to go check it out and go onto the ship and they discover strange visions whispers and of course all of the dead bodies 
from the aurora that everyone, no one's really survived. They say that this is The Shining meets the Titanic, but set in space. So I'm not sure what about that does not sound like a good time, but oh my gosh, is it for me. <laughs> now this does have its issues, which is why I think it's not going to be everyone's favorite book. Like no one, well, I'm not gonna say no one, but not everyone's gonna love it as much as I do. For one, I found the writing to be a little bit basic and predictable and nothing really stood out to me. The storytelling was good, but the writing itself was just pretty straightforward. Um, there are jumps in time from future and past. So we have after the events and you know, during the events of when they are aboard the Aurora, and that's fine, except when we get about halfway through and then it's just in the future. So I'm not sure why it wasn't balanced where every other chapter throughout the entire novel was a different time period. I wish we went with that route instead of, you know, jumping a lot in the first half of the book and then the second half just plays out like a normal story. It does kind of feel like a first draft, like you should have organized the novel a little bit better and organized the story a little bit because you could have really executed something special if you had jumped around throughout the entire book and left us hanging with some of the events that were happening like you did in the beginning of the book. Uh, the plot itself is not realistic in the slightest, obviously. This is not one of those accurate <laughs> space books. Um, there are some descriptions of space and science fiction, but it's not so much that you like have to understand everything that's going on. It's more of a horror novel than a science fiction novel. But without revealing too much, there's certain plot points in this that just would never happen even in the future. Um, and it's just, it reminds me of certain things uh, that we've seen in previous stories that are just very unrealistic and it just would not happen. Now, all of that being said, the criticism included, uh, that did not impact how much I liked this book. I did not care about any of that. Would it have been more perfect with those things sorted out? Absolutely. Did I enjoy it any less because of them? No, it was so, great. I mean, supernatural space horror, why is there not more of it? Haunted house in space. We need to get more of that. And this is one of those stories that I'm jealous I didn't think of first, to be honest. It's one of those where I'm like, I wish I did that. Maybe I can write something in the genre as well because I love it so much, but we need more space, like supernatural horror. We have a lot of space alien stuff. We have space other stuff. I guess, <laughs> but you know, as far as like ghosty stiff stuff and like supernatural, we don't have enough of that. Although I will say it might make some people mad. Again, I don't want to reveal too much. Obviously, I think you should go in without knowing too much, but I don't think everyone's going to love this, especially like the ending and everything. Not everyone's going to love it. I love it for personal reasons. I love anything to do with space and I love horror and I love supernatural. So naturally, I love this. This is definitely a comfort novel for me now. I will revisit this again and again. I feel like this has to be a yearly read for me. If they ever made this a movie, it would probably be trash, but it would be one of those guilty pleasure type horror movies, which are great. So that's kind of how I would describe this book in general. Okay, so the last official book we're gonna talk about is next, but I do have a current read that I'm reading I wanna to touch on for just like a minute. I haven't finished it, so I can't fully review it, but I do wanna talk about it. And then I'll tell you my next read, the one I'm gonna read after that one. So the last one we're really gonna talk about today is The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. Of course, this is the movie cover. We all know and love the movie from 2012. So this is actually a novella. The writing is very large. Um, this is at 164 pages, at least in this version of the book, so very, very fast read. Again, I found the perfect ambiance for this. I will have it linked down below if you are going to be reading this anytime soon. So this follows Arthur Kipps, of course, who is a lawyer who is sent on a assignment to go to Alice D Drablo, 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 Drublo's house. <laughs> I want to say Dubro, but it's Drublo of the Eel Marsh house to sort out all of her paperwork and figure out the deeds for the house and everything like that. And of course, there are hidden secrets hidden in this house, and he starts to see a woman in black. If you've seen the movie, you kind of know the basic storyline for that, but I will say the story in this and the way it plays out in the movie are very different, and I will be doing a book to movie comparison hopefully soon. I know I've promised them in the past and I just end up never doing them. I'm not sure why. Um, so I'm not going to review this too, too much uh, because I will be doing a full comparison to the movie. So I'm not going to reference this to the movie anymore because I'll save that for the video. But I actually really, really enjoyed the read of this and I gave this four out of five because I really liked the visuals. I feel like it was lacking 
in a lot of horror. I wanted more horror and less exposition. I feel like there's a lot of explanation of what Arthur is doing. Um, there's kind of a plot dump at the end, which I wasn't really excited about because I feel like in the movie, I know I said I wasn't gonna talk about the movie, but in the movie, we kind of get to see it a little bit more. And in the book, it's just like kind of explained. But besides that, I really love the setting, the atmosphere. The atmosphere is built so well in this book, like just like in the movie built it's beautiful it's gorgeous i love the idea of this house being on this little island with only this like one path to get to it at a certain time of day because the tide comes in i think that's genius i think it's great but i really like the writing in this i think it's easy to follow but still having that kind of like gothic atmosphere style of writing if that makes sense like kind of shirley jackson-esque um that has that similar tone to it but it's a lot easier to follow than shirley jackson i am excited to talk more about this in another video where i compare it to the movie because there are very big differences between the two um and i totally understand why the movie is made that way and i actually enjoy the movie more than the book, I think. But I really like them together, like having read it. And today I'm actually gonna rewatch the movies to prepare for that video. Um, and just because I finished the book, so I kind of feel a craving to watch it again because I just finished the story. I like the changes though that they made for the movie and I think it really works well as an adaptation. Um, but yeah, as a book, it's, it's a little bit different than what I was expecting, but I really, really enjoyed it. Okay, so I just wanted to mention my current read um, because I just wanna talk about it for a second. <laughs> I am reading uh, Stephen King's The Outsider. Uh, what page am I on? 178. Um, a lot of people say the HBO show is actually really good, so I'm excited to watch that. Uh, once I finish this, let me know if you want a book to series comparison um, after I f I'm done with this. It might take me a minute though, I'm not gonna lie. Stephen King lately, he's been putting me in a little bit of a slump. I've been reading these really exciting horror novels and I feel like as soon as you break away from reading Stephen King, it's kind of hard to go back to him. You know what I mean? Like he's the OG. He's the one that really got me into horror and writing and reading. But something about his books now just aren't as exciting to me. I love this story though. I really do. I really enjoy the story and the characters in this. However, I just feel like there's no need to make it this long. Like he made this so long, <laughs> why do we need all this procedural crime drama stuff? Uh, I feel like it could just be shortened a little bit. Maybe it's because I've read a bunch of like shorter books. So reading a hefty Stephen King is like not really hitting it for me right now. So I think I'll read this one in spurts um, and just space it out, read a book in between. It's exactly what I did with Woman in Black. I was fully planning on finishing this one by the time I made this video. That was not gonna happen. So I stopped and I read this one cause it's short. If I waited until I finished this book, it'd probably, this video would probably come out in July and I'd still only have five books to talk about. So that's not good. So I feel like I just need to take breaks from this one. It's just so long and like, the way he writes is just not as exciting to me anymore compared to like other authors that I've discovered. So if this, you know, if this is your sign to break away from Stephen King, if you know, that's all you've read. Um, I was there definitely in high school, that's all I read. But now's your sign to go explore some other authors because there are even better ones out there. I'm gonna say it. I have other favorites now. Stephen King is not my favorite anymore. On TikTok, I posted my top five horror books as they are right now. And a lot of you were surprised that not one Stephen King book made it in there because you guys know how much I love the girl who loved, loved Tom Gordon. Did not include that in my top five horror books as of right now. So that's saying a lot. And then my next read will actually be This Thing Between Us by Gus Moreno. I'm excited to read this. I've heard interesting things. Kind of sounds a little Black Mirror-y. So look forward to my thoughts on this. I'll probably share a little bit on Instagram uh, as I read this. So you can follow me on there if you want to hear my thoughts right away. But there you have the books that I've read lately. Just a couple. You know, I'm not a super fast reader. I don't read a ton. I wish I did. <laughs> I wish I did, but you'd have a lot more reading content if I did. Let me know what kind of other book content you'd like to see. I know I ask that every single time and I'm always like, I want to do more. What do I do? I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what kind of videos you want to see. I could do like what's on my TBR shelf. I could do anticipated five-star reads. Um, I could do just like top 10 books like I do with my movies, but with certain genres. So let me know what you want to see as far as like reading and book stuff. Cause I I really, really, really want to post more of it because I love talking about books and I love reading. I just don't do it enough, you know? Anyway, let me know what your favorite thing that you've read lately that you would recommend or what you're currently reading. And if you enjoy it, leave your thoughts down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.